If I was a student in Hogwarts and I was reading the book Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, and as I'm going through and I discover that, oh, there's a film version of the book, and if I pop the DVD in and I watch the film, I'll just go like, oh, well, if the whole thing about this movie is where to find these beasts, I mean, it's just New York City. I'll just watch the movie. <laughs> Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, released in 2016 and is directed by David Yates, who has directed such films like The Legend of Tarzan, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1, Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, and the soon-to-be-released Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore. The man is quite a range. I mean, his career started when Harry Potter was a pubescent teenager, and then it ended, or at least the most recent one, is where Harry Potter was only just a twinkle in James Potter's eye. And this film is starring Eddie Redmayne, Catherine Watterson, Dan Fogel, Alison Skidole, Ezra Miller, Samantha Morton, John Hoyt, and Colin Farrell. And may or may not have a cameo of Johnny Depp as Grindelwald. I, I don't know if we are still not allowed to mention his name anymore. I don't know. Moving on. And the reason why I'm talking about Fantastic Beasts and where to find them is because this weekend is the release of the third Fantastic Beasts films, Fantastic Beasts The Secrets of Dumbledore. You remember when J.K. Rowling said like, oh yes, we're gonna do Fantastic Beasts films and they're all gonna be set in the Americas. We're not gonna go to Hogwarts or talk about Dumbledore or anything related to Harry Potter at all. We're gonna expand the Harry Potter wizarding universe. And here we are with the third Fantastic Beasts films literally being called The Secrets of Dumbledore. Door. But J.K. Rowling really could say, you know, whatever she wants. She has said whatever she wants, and she still makes billions of pounds and billions of dollars on it. But this is all leading up to me ranking all of the Harry Potter Fantastic Beasts films on Friday for the release of the third Fantastic Beasts film, and who knows when we're gonna get a fourth and supposedly a fifth one of these, just because the Fantastic Beasts films have kind of been deteriorating with each entry. I mean, there's only been two, but, you know, you, you, you see where I'm going with this. Eddie Redmayne plays Newt Scamander, and until this day, I thought his name was actually Newt's Commander. Wow. Newt Scamander has recently arrived in New York City. However, at the start of our journey, his magical briefcase gets opened up, and a couple of the mystical beasts that were inside have escaped, and are now roaming around the streets of New York City. So Newt Scamander, along with his newly formed muggle friend, Jacob Kowalski, go on a mission of rounding up all of the missing beasts. Oh, and then there's also Colin Farrell in here, who may or may not be Grindelwald, but he's here to tame a, a mystical dark energy beast thing from Ezra Miller. Uh-huh. Let me start off by saying that I love Harry Potter. It, Harry Potter was my thing growing up in middle school and in high school when I saw Chamber of Secrets. That was really my introduction to this world and seeing just how cool it was. And I went home and immediately started reading all of the Harry Potter books. For a movie to get me to want to read, especially when I'm in middle school and in high school, that is impressive. So, this whole series, this wizarding universe, is very special to me. Slytherin House. All the way. So when they announced that they were doing a prequel series called Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, and it was going to be written by J.K. Rowling herself, I was very excited. And how nice is this going to be? There's not going to be any books released before this film. Everyone's going to go in with no spoilers. We're not going to know exactly what's going on. So we went to see the movie, and then as we came out, we are still asking, really, I guess, what what the hell's going on? What was, what was the point of this? And it's also very strange because this film feels like a complete circle. It feels like a beginning middle and an end of this prequel Fantastic Beast series. But I remember J.K. Rowling saying like, no, they're going to be doing a series of five of these movies. So when this movie ended, I was like, well, this, this story actually kind of just ended. Where, where are we going to go from here? Kowalski lost all of his memory. So are, are, you're gonna, probably going to bring him back for the second one, right? So you're going to have him remember everything. That's what you have to do. Eh, we'll talk about the shit show of crimes of Grindelwald in a couple of days. But the biggest detriment of this film is that it's fairly obvious that the whole overall arc of this character and of this story and of this series wasn't as planned out as well as it was with the original Harry Potter books. I think we had just some, like, generic ideas of what we wanted to do with this series, whereas in Harry Potter, 
You could tell, like, it was mapped out. Outlines, dissertations, essays about what they wanted to do with the characters. Now, with all that being said, I actually enjoyed this movie. It was a fun theater-going experience for me. It was one of the first times I went to Alamo Draft House, which is the greatest movie chain in the history of the world. It's freaking phenomenal. And it really sucks that they took their business elsewhere out of Kalamazoo, Michigan. Ugh, it angers me so much. But we're quickly introduced to Newt Scamander, <laughs> played by Eddie Redmayne, and this character is so intriguing, and he is so charming. And it's all thanks to Eddie Redmayne. He plays it so cutely, I guess. That's, that's the best word I could use for him. He's cute. He's adorable, he's intriguing, and he's so gentle, which is what you have to be if you are a caretaker of scared animals, I guess. You can't have an aura about you like a Colin Farrell. People are not just gonna easily warm up to you. No, you have to have these warm, welcoming, kind of quiet sensibilities, and Eddie Redmayne, just as a person in general, has those, and he plays it wonderfully as Newt Scamander in this movie. <laughs> and Dan Fogel is in this movie solely for the comedic relief. Kind of to have him as the introduction to this world from the audience's eyes because he is a muggle. He's never heard of witches or wizards actually existing in the world. So it's fun to see the excitement and the wonder through his eyes because that's exactly how I remember this whole world when I was a kid and watching these movies for the first time. And seeing them go about trying to get all these adorable, sometimes giant, sometimes mini little creatures is it's it's adorable. I love I love watching it. Where this movie starts to lose me or parts of this movie that I just could care less about is really anything with Ezra Miller in it. He belongs to this boarding really hardcore Christian community, but he's a secret dark wizard person thing. I don't know. I like Harry Potter. I'm not big on all like the trivia of what creatures' names are and things like that, so I'm I'm sure there's a whole book written about this type of character. But I'm like, who are you? What are you doing? And then once we get to the end, it's like, okay, I still don't know who you are, or what you're doing, or why it matters. What I will tell you, though, is that America sucks compared to the UK. Over in the UK, there is a nice understanding between the wizarding world and the muggle world. But here in America, it's like, oh no, we gotta get all these wizards and witches extinct, and no one can know about them. We have to erase everyone's memory. We have to Spider-Man no way home this shit like crazy. Alison Sedol and Katherine Watterson are here as well, part of the whole little company, the whole little tribe of main characters that we have for this new series of films, and I really don't know what purpose they serve in this series. In the original Harry Potter, we had Harry, we had Ron, we had Hermione, and they all played their own particular roles in the group. Here, though, they're a group, and I, I don't understand why. I feel like all I'm doing is bashing on this movie, and, and I don't mean to because, like I said, I did have an enjoyable time watching this thing. However, I think what happened, though, and I'm almost certain this is what happens, Warner Brothers said, well, the Harry Potter books are done, but we want that Harry Potter money, so J.K. Rowling, whatever you want, could you please just make more? And uh, also, while you're making more, if you could just completely rush it, and if you could um, get it done, like, next year, that would be awesome. And then after this movie came out, Warner Brothers said, hey, thanks, you know, it did okay, but uh, really what we want now more so is uh, we want, uh, like, we want the Harry Potter stuff. So we want Dumbledore, we want Hogwarts, we want really Harry Potter again. So could you just turn this franchise into Harry Potter for us again? please. Guarantee that's exactly what happened here. I think this film is an okay, enjoyable time, especially if you are a fan of this wizarding world. It's nothing substantial and nothing great, nothing to run home screaming at the top of your lungs just how great it is about. I'm gonna give Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them three out of five Blu-rays. Not exactly what I had in mind, but not bad. All right, everyone, so we are continuing on our journey to my ranking of all of the Harry Potter films this Friday, but until we get there and before we get to the release of the third Fantastic Beasts film this weekend, we gotta talk about the second one that came out, Fantastic Beasts The Crimes of Grindelwald. I've only seen it twice, and I regret both times watching it. But we'll talk more about it next time. So guys, if you've seen Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, what did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across because of this video, then comment below let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell. See you all the next time I'm releasing my next movie review. So guys, I will see you next time with my review of Fantastic Beasts 2, Grindelwald, and stuff. So in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie.
Take care, guys.